Hey, Guru Nation, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share. It really means a lot to me. I got asked a question that I know I've covered this in the past, but it was on longer videos, so I wanted to make a short one. This is for the doctors. This is for the MDs, the DOs, the people that are going to be PIs that are thinking of becoming a principal investigator, whether for your own clinic or in a business partnership with someone, or maybe even as an employee, like it doesn't matter. I asked the question, what are the risks to my license, to my medical license, as a principal investigator? So, as a principal investigator of a trial, you are responsible, and only you, no matter who you delegate things to at your site, which by the way, you're allowed to delegate everything at your site, but you have to maintain safety oversight, appropriate safety oversight, over the patients in your study. So that means assessing AEs. That means informed consent. That means knowing what's going on. That means knowing and ensuring that your staff is following good clinical practice and the protocol. Assuming you know all that, and if you don't know all that, I have a five-hour video where you, have, you can understand everything that goes on in clinical research to get a better understanding. Your risks to your license are actually not that many. So, even if you commit fraud, all right, let's just take the worst case scenario. You commit fraud where you make up data and you rip off sponsors, you're probably going to jail. And you're going to, you probably because of that, you're going to lose your license. Let's say you're just a negligent PI where you didn't have oversight and your site's just making a bunch of deviations. You're probably never going to do research again, but nothing happens to your license. It doesn't even, there's no public record of, of anything on your license. You might get a, a warning letter from the FDA. You might get blacklisted by the FDA from clinical research. That still has nothing to do with the state board. Now, some states, they may look at that and say, well, you know, what should we do about your license? But for the most part, Nothing really can happen to your license unless you commit fraud and I'm going to jail. Now let's say, let's say we take out those extreme scenarios because most of you guys, if you're even asking these questions, that's probably not going to be you. So what can happen to your license? The answer is nothing. Now, if you want the risks associated with being a PI, there are several. All right, number one, your malpractice insurance in some cases is going to go up. Number two, there is a um, open payments version of CMS for looking at pharmaceutical companies that pay investigators. As soon as you become a PI for a study, it doesn't matter if you work for a site and the site's only giving you 10% of the budget, that's what you agreed on, or whatever percent that is, the entire amount of money that the site gets for the studies that you do studies with shows up on open payments um, as part of the Sunshine Act. So let's say you do a study with Pfizer and over the course of two years, Pfizer paid the site $400,000 and the site paid you, uh, let's say they paid you 20%, let's say they paid you 80,000. Sunshine Act is gonna show Pfizer paid you, the doctor, 400,000. So, oftentimes when patients or people trying to find dirt on doctors, they'll go to these websites, and of course, those numbers are inflated because that's the gross amount that the drug company paid the site, not counting all the expenses the site has as far as employees and overhead and all, it's just everything that goes into running a research study. It just shows unfairly the gross payment to you. Now, maybe they've changed that. Last time I checked, that's the way it's being reported. Uh, so that's a risk. Another risk, which is not really a risk, is just you are doing another business. You do have to put in some time into it, right? And you could, like I said, you, you're allowed to delegate duties to coordinators. Most PIs do, while still maintaining patient oversight, safety oversight. You do have to do things like meet with the monitors when they come, be there for trainings, like site initiation visits. So it is more time consuming than you would like. 
you're also going to get bombarded, and I mean blasted with email from just from one study. If you're on one study and you put your email address, you're just going to get email after email from every vendor, every memo. They just bombard the PIs. So don't use your personal email address because you're going to end up ignoring it like one of my PIs did. We, we always create separate accounts for them, email addresses, so that they know, okay, this is the research email, this is my personal email. So I don't know if that's much of a risk, um, but that's going to happen. Another thing is the fact that you're responsible. So, like, coordinators, you know, they come and go. Like, if you manage them right, they'll stay with you longer, but turnover so you're gonna have to invest in training programs like CRA, CRC Academy. CRC Academy would be perfect. Uh, but you remember you are responsible from the conduct of the trial. So it could increase your stress levels if you're having turnover of your staff and you have an active study with patients in it and if there's no coordinator to do the visit you've got to do the visit. You're the PI. You're responsible. So everyone else can leave and move on, the study stays with your name. So even if you decide, let's say you're an employee of a site, and you do a study, and you decide, you know what, I don't like the way this site operates, I'm done, I'm quitting. That study stays with you, that sponsor is going to hold you accountable. Oftentimes, the sites are going to find a way to change the PI, but until they do that, or maybe they're incompetent and they don't know how to do that, the study stays with you. So monitors are going to be after you. Um, if they find serious issues, the FDA is going to come after you. Now, the FDA really has no teeth in the sense of like disciplinary action or taking away your license. Again, all they can do is warning letters and ban you from doing research. So those are the risks you have to deal with as a PI. At the end of the day, I think the benefits far outweigh the risks. I've done a video on benefits of being a PI. So as long as you're managing these risks properly and you have contingency plans in place for all the foreseeable things that can happen, mainly it's patient safety. Just take care of the patients, make sure you have good coordinators, good staff running your studies, good training programs in place, you're fine. And the good thing is you can always say no to new studies. And if you're in the middle of a crazy study and you decide for some reason, hey, this is not for me, you can either not screen any more patients, or if you already have patients in the study, but they're not benefiting from the study, you can withdraw them, so have them do an early term visit, uh, and then not screen any more patients also. So there are some things you can do to mitigate your risk. Uh, but that's really it. Once you commit to it, you got to do it. You got to do it the right way. One study at a time. Every sponsor is going to hold you responsible. The second part to this question was, how much time does a PI need to dedicate to research? The answer varies from zero hours a week to more than 40 hours a week. It depends, again, on how many studies. And each study, let's say you have one study. Let's say you put 10 patients in that study. Let's say that study is weekly visits for those 10 patients for six months. So for six months, you got 10 visits happening at your site. There's a lot of data that goes into it. That's why you need a good coordinator. One fourth of those visits on average are gonna have a lab test. that so you're gonna have to review the labs. Each time the patients come in, you're gonna have to assess for adverse events. Your coordinator, sure, your coordinator is gonna be a huge asset and go through AEs uh, for you. But you have to be aware of them because some of them might be related to the IT and others may not. So those ones that are related to the IT, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to continue patient the study and just monitor them closely for safety? Are you going to repeat any labs? Only the PI can make those assessments. Yes, you can hire a sub-investigator, nurse practitioner, physician's assistant, another MD, and they can make those decisions as clinicians. You can empower them to do that. But at the end of the day, you've got to supervise the whole thing. And your footprint, your fingerprint's got to be on the documents. So, meaning progress notes. Even if you delegate another MD sub I to look at lab results and sign and assess for clinically significant or not, you still have to co-sign it every time. 
So the time really varies. Like in this scenario of one study, 10 patients, one visit a week for six months, let's say each visit's an hour long for each patient, the PI maybe is five, 10 minutes for each patient. So you're looking at, let's say 10 minutes every day for a week. So that's five times five is 25 minutes that week. It's not a lot, all right? Now, if you do 10 studies at that same rate, just 10 exit. So you spent in the first scenario 25 minutes a week, and the next one you're spending 250 minutes a week, which is what, like over two hours? I guess it's sometimes four, yeah. A little bit over two hours. So workload really is, I know I said a workload's gonna increase, but if you delegate properly and you still maintain oversight, it's very manageable, very manageable. So hopefully this helps. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Oh, I forgot to add. With that, each study, the monitor comes every four to six weeks. You generally have to meet with the monitor for 10 minutes at a time, unless there are issues in which you will meet with the monitor for maybe 30 minutes at a time. As much as 60 if they have to retrain each time they come in. Wanted to add that in there as well. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Thank you.